you have to unpack it, roll out it on the floor, plug it into a fan and just let it inflate over five minutes and it gets this structure. This is the Inflativerse. This is uh, Nottingham University's mobile planetarium, which we take to schools to show students uh, all about astronomy. So we have an inflatable dome, and inside we can project images of the stars uh, or the constellations to try and show students what the night sky looks like and explain different things such as moon phases or how the stars change during the night. Inside it, we have a projector, so we can just project light through a cylinder with the stars on it onto the walls of the dome. And it's really realistic. It looks as though you're looking at the night sky inside. So to get into this thing, we just have to crawl through the entrance tube. So we just open up the flaps and crawl in through the gap. So the projector itself just has a lamp exactly in the middle of this filter. And once you put this on top, it just projects the constellations in this case. We've got several filters where we can just project things um, onto the dome. And that ranges from ocean currents over plate tectonics down to constellations and stars and the southern sky and the northern sky. For us, we arrive at a school and we're ready to go 20 minutes later. And most of that is just unpacking the dome and having it inflate because that takes a few minutes. Then you just uh, plug in the projector, you put a filter on top, you switch the light on and you're ready to go. Mostly we're focusing on looking at the constellations at different times of year and showing where the moon is and the planets are. I mean, everyone in the project is really enthusiastic and the enthusiasm really comes across inside the dome. Um, so hopefully we can get the kids interested. The basic idea is to engage people into science and uh, we're currently aiming at year four and year nine students. For primary kids it's much more about uh, telling stories and telling myths and showing the constellations, uh, not actually the physics behind it. We put up images of the Greek constellations um, around the stars and we can show, show students how the stories were developed around these constellations and how the Greeks used them for storytelling. You probably noticed all the constellations and the stars have really funny names. These all come from the ancient Greek mythology. One of the stories I tell in the dome is the story of Cassiopeia, who is a very beautiful queen of Greece. She was a very beautiful woman, but very vain. She would go around and tell everyone that she's the most beautiful woman in the world. And of course, this made all the other women jealous. Some of the maids of King Neptune convinced him to bring punishment upon Cassiopeia for her vanity. And what he did was he put her up in the heavens. So he immortalized her in the heavens but she's a constellation that's near the pole star, which means that she rotates around the pole every night. And this means at certain times of the night, if you look at Cassiopeia in the sky, she's sitting upside down in her throne. And this is seen as the ultimate humiliation for someone who is as vain as Cassiopeia was. The myth side is, is pretty popular with especially younger kids. So for older kids, when I run the shows, I prefer talking about the signs. So why are some stars blue? Why are some stars red? I talk about the Milky Way galaxy and the Andromeda galaxy and how they will collide in five billion years and those kind of things. Um, but little kids that didn't study science yet, that's obviously, you know, a bit too high level. So, I mean, we can see the signs of the zodiac. Um, so we have Virgo the twins, Cancer the crab, Leo. Evelyn is getting into the myths, yeah, and I quite like that about her. So it's... Uh, She's a really good uh, storyteller, which I don't think I personally am. 